Oh, good morning. We're, uh, this is Easter too. And we're having um, praying together morning prayer service found in our prayer books um, in the garden this week. Um, so if you will, um, so please join me. So we light a candle. So just to say, this is what St. Michael, what we are doing at St. Michael. Um, every, everyone this morning, many of us this morning, are in our homes, at our places, and we're making holy places there, and we're meeting at 9.30, everyone in their place, so we light a candle, or two, or three, or four, or five, <laughs> and we make our holy and sacred places. So we meet at 9.30, light our candles, Take a few moments of silence, breathe deep, morning prayer begins on page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We turn to um, page 79 and 80 for the confession and absolution. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. On the next page, 80. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. On the next page from Easter, Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We pray on page 83. We'll pray Christ our Passover. We'll pray this in unison. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. <clears throat> Our psalm is 16. And that's found in your liturgy that I think you all you all should have. I sent it all to you in email, and I delivered to those who don't have email. Um, but if you don't have that, it is in your prayer book on page 599, the Psalm 16. And we'll pray this in unison. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good. 
good above all others. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Our first lesson is a reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently, of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The Word of the Lord. And we respond to the first reading with Canticle 11 by praying Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah, found on page 87 and 88. <clears throat> Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is a reading from First Peter. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth, into a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God, through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. And we respond to the second reading with Canticle 18, <clears throat> found in page 93, A Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. And this is followed by our Gospel, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. <clears throat> when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> and this is my sermon for today. I have a nice, I, I have a sign. I have a sign. <laughs> I have a sign on my refrigerator that says, if you must doubt, doubt your own limitations. But we all know about doubt. It means that we do not believe that something can or will or could happen. Webster's Dictionary says doubt is to be uncertain or undecided, to tend to disbelieve, a wavering of opinion or belief, 
a condition of uncertainty. Some people doubt even in the face of certainty, scientific proof of, even when it is right before their eyes. Most of us are familiar with a story about doubting Thomas. Thomas wasn't present when Jesus came to the disciples after the resurrection, and Thomas wouldn't believe that they saw him alive. To believe it, he said, he needed to see with his own eyes and feel with his own hands. Some have said that this gospel is not about Thomas at all, but about Jesus. They say it's about Jesus coming to Thomas in his disbelief. It is about Jesus coming to us in our disbelief. We can always identify with characters in the gospel stories. Like Peter, we can be overcome by fear when things get rough. Like the women who stayed with Jesus in spite of the danger, we too can be strong and follow like he did. We too can be like Thomas and have doubts, want proof. We too can be the one Jesus comes to. The disciples are always surprised when Jesus comes to them. He doesn't come in a blaze of glory. He comes quietly, lovingly, knowing all, not neat and tidy, but offering the marks of his suffering, breathing new life into them, and breathe he does. Jesus breathes his spirit on his dear people and sends them out to live his message of love, forgiveness, and peace. In the creation story, God molded Adam out of clay and breathed life into him. God has breathed on us from the dawn of creation, breathing the first wind into the dust of the earth, making Adam, then Eve, living beings. The prophet Elijah breathed the breath of life into the son of the Shunammite woman. The apostle Paul revived Eutychus in the book of Acts with the same breath of life. That we are together this morning, even in our own homes, here in the garden, still celebrating Jesus' resurrection, testifies to the power of that holy breath, that Holy Spirit present throughout the ages. Whenever we love, forgive, overcome hatred, violence, or indifference, the Spirit of Jesus is moving like the wind, and resurrectional life is alive and well wherever we ever are. Thomas reminds us that doubting is part of the journey. Jesus knows it's how we are, so he says, Peace be with you. Don't doubt. Believe. Theologian Paul Tillich said that doubt isn't the opposite of faith. Rather, it is an element of faith. Frederick Beekner, Presbyterian pastor, says, If we don't have any doubts, we're either kidding ourselves or asleep. He characterizes doubts as the ants in the pants of faith to keep us awake and moving. At the beginning of the Gospel of John, the author writes that through Jesus, God has brought life and light to the world. In the death of Jesus on the cross, it appeared that the power of darkness was stronger than the power of light, that darkness had overcome the light. But through the resurrection, we see that the light still shines. And the disciples' great commission is to continue Jesus' work, spreading his light throughout the world. Their life and future changed because they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. In our baptism, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. We too are empowered and commissioned because of the resurrection to spread the light of Christ. Theologian Marjorie Suchaki writes, we can think about resurrection through the metaphor of the sun. We can't look directly at the sun. The brightness blinds us. Our eyes aren't suited to that light. Yet the sun, which we cannot look at directly, illuminates everything, and in its light we can see and make our way in the world. The resurrection lights the entire New Testament, confirming what Jesus taught in his life and death and is the catalyst that changes the disciples, that transforms them, and that light, that power, led to the foundation of the church. 
On this April morning, when the world has put away the baskets and eggs and bunnies and is coping with a world shut down from the COVID-19 virus, we are challenged to embrace our future on this planet in faith, believing that the light of the resurrection does indeed empower us to make our way in a rapidly changing world. We are challenged to work together for the good of all, to play our part in the new story. We are challenged to seek peace and reconciliation, which is the work of Jesus and the church. The church is us, the people. It's not the building, it's us. We are the church. We are challenged to know that while we may be doubting Thomas's too, God comes to us as God's beloved children, faithful friends, and spiritual partners in the ongoing healing work of the whole world. The ongoing healing work of the whole world is to love one another, to make peace in the world, to be good stewards of this beautiful earth. It is to do our part to make it all work as well as possible. The ongoing work in the world is to be, put, is to be in it, but not of it to stand up for justice and mercy and truth, to speak and stand up for the little, the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely, to protect the same. The ongoing work of the world is to share what we have, our time, talent, and treasure, and to remember that we are all God's children, no matter what our race or religion or sex or anything else. The ongoing work of the world is to believe and respond. Amen. Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote this. How easy, Lord, it is for me to live with you. How easy it is for me to believe in you. When my understanding is perplexed by doubts or on the point of giving up, when the most intelligent men see no further than the coming evening and know not what they shall do tomorrow, you send me a clear assurance that you are there and that you will ensure that not all the roads of goodness are barred. From the heights of earthly fame, I look back in wonder at the road that led through hopelessness to this place whence I can send mankind a reflection of your radiance. And whatever I in this life may yet reflect that you will give me, and whatever I shall not attain, that plainly you have purposed for others. Let us pray. Lord, in the life which wells up in us, and in the matter which sustains us, we find much more than your gifts. It is you, yourself, whom we find. You, who make us participate in your being. You, who mold us. Truly in the ruling, and in the first disciplining of our living strength in the continually beneficent play of secondary causes, we touch, as near as possible, the two faces of your creative action, and we encounter and kiss your two marvelous hands, the one which holds us so firmly that it is merged in us with the sources of life, and the other whose embrace is so wide that at its slightest pressure, all the springs of the universe respond harmoniously together. Amen. And we respond to this with the Apostles' Creed. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> In the career at St. Michael's, this is where our offertory is. So, but do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Please remember to send your tithes to St. Michael. Our service continues with the prayers, page 97. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I will pray suffrages A, just after that at the bottom of the page. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Our collect for the day, Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our colics are on the next two pages. A collect for the renewal of life, O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guard our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a colic for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely tr trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a call for grace. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a collect for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
me. Extra Zekra for Mishan. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the people of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for Anne, Aaron, Angel and Dustin, Becky and family, Bonnie, Karen, Carol and Brian, Chez, Dan, Dee and Sam, Don and Linda, Ethel and family, Gwyn, John and Sharon, Jordana, Kay, Leanne and Bill, Megan and Sophia, Michael, Mike and Joanne, Misha, Nathan, Nicole, Noel, Paisley, Pat and family, Rosemary, Ruby, Sarah, Stephen and Barbara, Sue and family, Tom, Everett March, Virginia Stebbins and family. We pray for all the world affected by COVID-19. We pray for health care workers and their families and for all first responders. We pray for immigrants and their children, Wood Bank recipients and volunteers. We pray for veterans and their families. We pray for our Bishop Marty Stebbins, the Diocese of Montana, Holy Trinity Troy, the Diocese of Jerusalem, and peace in the Holy Land. We pray for Chrysalis School, Camp Marshall, all victims of violence, especially children. We remember the anxious and the fearful, and we pray for this planet, our precious island home. Please add your own intercessions, silently or aloud. This morning we pray for doctors and nurses found on page 460. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted in your creation glorified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for the human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And this is a prayer from Creation Justice Ministries. Um, it's an Earth Day resource. Remember, Earth Day is this week. It's our 50th. It's Earth Day's 50th anniversary. And I remember the first one. I was there. <laughs> I was 18 at the time. So, Lord, the wounds of the world are too deep for us to heal. You lift up the sick in body and mind as well as the withered in soul and spirit. We lift up the victims of greed and injustice as well as the prisoners of grief and heartache. We ask for your care and mercy upon us all. Instill compassion within us for those suffering from injustice. Make us generous with the resources you have entrusted to us. Let your work of rescue be done in us and through us all. Amen. And our general thanksgiving 
and we'll pray this together, page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The Prayer of St. Chrysostom Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless us, everyone. Our worship has ended. Our service begins. Let us stay home and rejoice in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Alleluia.